Hey, what's going on everyone? In this more casual review, we'll be taking a look at one of the more underrated grunt suits from the Gundam franchise, the RE100 Gun Easy. Believe it or not, Victory Gundam is one of my favorite series. It's such a dark anime, but still has a lot of that early 90s weirdness. So of course, I'm all about picking up every Victory Gundam suit released. Or at least I'm gonna try. Anyway, we'll be looking at this RE100 Gun Easy in four categories. The build, appearance, articulation, and the gimmicks. Unlike those Master Grade reviews though, we won't be giving any scores out. Instead, let's just take a quick look over this kit. I'm really hoping this kit is good enough to warrant more Victory Gundam suits. Alright, now let's get right into this build. Like I've said in my other RE100 reviews, these builds are definitely more about function than form. There's no inner frame here outside of the arms, with everything else being basically polycap sandwiches. The legs and chest specifically are just big pieces that sandwich together with some frills thrown on top. Thankfully though, this really didn't seem to hurt the part separation too much. I found the part separation of this head specifically to be really great. Like this blue section on top, which I could see being a terrible sticker, is actually a separate piece, and these vents on the side are separate as well. I love when head vents are removable, since it makes getting black paint inside like a 30 second job with a Gundam marker. Of course, if you'd rather skip the painting, Bandai does provide a sticker, which I'm using here. I'm also a really big fan of the fake inner frame for the vents in the skirts and shoulders. This allows you to paint the vents separately, then snap armor over top of it. I decided to use black paint for my vents, just to make them seem a bit deeper. This is by far my most requested feature for these late UC vent heavy kits. I will say the vents on the chest and thrusters in the backpack don't get that same luxury though, being standalone pieces. Getting black paint in here is going to be a bit tricky. Again though, the bulk of this engineering is super simple, basically relying on polycaps for every joint, specifically a swivel type polycap. Really, almost every joint on this kit makes use of this single polycap. I mean, just look at how many they give you. Moving on to the painting, since this kit is so monotone, there really isn't much to do here. However, there are some very, very minor touch-ups you can add. First up is the most noticeable, this thruster on the side of the shoulder. It's molded into the green armor, so paint is absolutely required here. Same goes for this barely noticeable molded in thruster on the back of the chest. This one is just so hidden away though, you can probably skip over it. As mentioned before, I went with paint for all these fake inner frame vents, specifically on the shoulders and skirts. Even though they look fine in the inner frame color, I just prefer a more consistent black look, you know? When it came to the vents on the chest and backpack though, I just went with panel lining since again, those are going to be a bit tricky given how recessed they are. Lastly, there are these shapes on the forearms where you attach the shield. It's built into the green armor, so it's going to need a bit of black paint to add some depth. Bandai does provide a sticker for it though, which I'm using here, but it does look a little cheap, leaving the sides green. Of course, if you're swapping the shield in and out frequently, this is probably for the best, as paint would probably scrape off. So the build for this kit, it was extremely basic but it does have some decent part separation. I'd say beginners could build this guy with no problem. I mean, if there are any beginners out there that are into Victory Gundam of all things. Anyway, let's take a look at this appearance. First up, the proportions. They are super streamlined, with almost none of that early 90s bulk remaining. You could drop this guy into Gundam 00 and he'd fit right in. Having said that, it kinda works. Everything is in proportion to itself and blends together very well. For example, newer takes on older suits tend to have longer legs, and sure enough, this kit does, but it's not super noticeable given that the chest and arms have a similar streamlining. Really, everything is given the same level of updating here, leading to a very cohesive silhouette. Also, putting this guy next to the more modernized take on the Victory Gundam that is the Verka, this suit's updated design really comes into focus. See, those Master Grade Victory Gundams have some seriously overhauled proportions. So it makes sense that their Grunt series suit would be redesigned to fit in. Moving on to the colors though, they're uh, fairly off on this kit. Comparing to the anime appearance, the colors are overall just darker than they should be, no doubt in an attempt to modernize this suit even more. This base green is just a little too saturated for me, but it's close enough. This blue though is another story, with its saturation cranked all the way up to 11. I'm willing to bet the oversaturation of this blue was an attempt to differentiate it from the inner frame gray, but honestly that problem would have been fixed if they had just made the blue a bit brighter instead. 
Thankfully, however, this part separation was really solid. So really, these weird colors shouldn't be a deal breaker by any means. You could legitimately buy some spray paint, cut all the pieces out, give them a few coats, and have this guy looking solid within an afternoon. I really like the decals on this kit. While you do get the standard caution sign decals, which might look pretty good on this more modernized design, I'm a much bigger fan of these pilot names. In the Victory Gundam anime, there was a team of women that each had their own personalized gun easy, and thankfully, you get a decal for each one. This is just great attention to detail on Bandai's part. Honestly, I just can't decide which one to use here. All said and done, this appearance is about as streamlined and modernized as it gets, which I may not be the biggest fan of, but I do think he'll look great next to the Master Grade Victory Gundams, and really, that's the important thing here. Also, a more modern appearance usually means more modern articulation, so let's see what we've got here. Starting with the feet, they're just three pieces snapped together, so no movement whatsoever. You get three swivels from the ankles, allowing for some basic movement. Nothing crazy, but he can find footing most of the time. The knee is close to a 180 degree bend. This is a pretty stable bend as well, so just great stuff here. Moving on to the hips, they're a modified polycap on a peg with a nice swivel below, so you get all the kicks, splits, and spins you could ask for. There's also a sliding mechanism in these hips that let you move each hip mount forwards and backwards individually. Pretty cool stuff. These skirts are about what you'd expect. The back skirt is locked in place though. Working our way up the chest, you'll notice a few joints in here, allowing for some solid ab crunches and tilts. You also get the usual 360 degree spin below as well. These shoulders have a really great 45 degree pop out, perfect for some shooting poses. You also get the expected spin and decent lateral movement. Just like the Master Grade Victory Gundams, the upper arm spin here is a fairly weak connection. This peg just isn't long enough to really get locked in, you know? The elbow gives you almost a 180 degree bend, and you get an additional spin from this ankle guard. Unfortunately, you only get a single set of hands for this kit. Yeah, just the standard fist with pegs inside for holding weapons. This is definitely some corner cutting on Bandai's part. Lastly on the head, the neck is on a great forwards and backwards hinge, and the head itself is on a decent ball joint. And that about wraps up this articulation. It's about as standard as it gets. I would have liked a bit more from the feet, and a few more hands though. Also, this upper arm connection can be pretty finicky. Still, there's more than enough here to do some solid posing, especially once you factor in these gimmicks. First up is his beam rifle. It's a little on the bland side, being all gray, but it does have some okay part separation. He can hold this rifle pretty well thanks to that peg in the hands. The butt of this gun does overlap with the forearm gauntlet slightly, but it's not that big of a deal here. A unique feature of this rifle is that you can break it down into a smaller pistol. I'm probably never going to use it like this, but it's always nice to have the option, right? On a side note, the runner of this gun is actually taken straight from the Master Grade Victory Gundam, meaning you get a few extra parts here, mainly the action base connectors. So yeah, if you have a Victory Gundam and need some connectors for whatever reason, this is the kit for you. Next up is his Beam Saber. You get two blades and the Victory Gundam's fan blade as well but unfortunately you only get a single handle for this kit. Again, no issues holding the saber up though, so I really can't complain. You can also store this handle inside this shoulder pack here. Speaking of the shoulder packs, they just slide in and out, making them a great way to customize this kit. The other shoulder pack features two individual missiles by the way. Personally though, I think these shoulder packs bulk the design up just a little bit too much, so I instead use these little placeholders instead. It just has a more clean silhouette to me, you know? The shield for this kit has some really great details on it, and a nice reflective coating to it. It's probably one of the best beam shields I've seen in a while. It attaches between this removable generator on the forearm gauntlet. I would have liked this generator to extend out a bit more, as currently the shield has a tendency to knock up against the shoulder armor. Lastly, you get his beam bazooka. I really love this color separation here, and this nice darker shade of green. Thanks to a movable handle, it's really easy to get a solid pose with this thing too. When it's not in use though, you can store it on the back of the skirt. And that's it for these gimmicks. He comes with the basic arsenal you'd expect, and everything works pretty perfectly. Really, I have no complaints here at all. Okay, now it's time to wrap all this up here. I really enjoyed this kit. While it doesn't break the mold in any way, for a basic grunt suit, it hits all the marks. The build was super simple, but it had some really well thought out part separation. The articulation lets you hit all the poses you'd expect, and the gimmicks work pretty flawlessly. 
The only issue I have is the appearance, and I'm willing to bet a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that one. But still, he looks good next to the Master Grade Victory Gundams, and really, that's the important thing there. I do think I'll at least do a full paint job on this guy though. Anyway, if you're into Victory Gundam or you just want a simple kit for some customizing, you won't be too disappointed with this RE100 Gun Easy. He really is just an all around solid kit. Alright, thanks for watching and feel free to follow me on Instagram. I post updates, work in progress builds, the whole deal. You can also leave any questions or comments about this kit below and I'm more than happy to get back to you. Alright, thanks for watching and see you next time.